Hey, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'm Chris Austin from Austin, Texas, originally from Canada. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the Open BMC, uh, the work that we've done there. Uh, last year uh, we were here and we talked about the host boot code and the Opal code and how we were able to take the work that we did there and get it up on the GitHub and make it freely available as part of uh, Open Power, uh, the donation to Open Power. All right, but we all know something a little bit interesting is that over here, this is Open Power Systems, right? If you wanted to build a server, um, this is your stack. And everything in blue is available, free, open. You can work with us and we will help you out. There's this one part down at the bottom though, and it's for a server of a BMC. And if you, um, if you did it yourself, that's fine. It, but we didn't really provide an open available one for you to do. So you had to either go and purchase a contract with another company or you had to do it yourself. So uh, the talk this morning from Aaron was pretty appropriate because you know, we talked about open, open, make everything open. And that's what we tried to do is, uh, is uh, support the Verily system and create a BMC that was open. All right, we've heard this a few times already, so I'll go by it really, really quick. But a base management controller can, is job in life. You plug it into the wall and it is a, a available for you and it'll monitor uh, sensors on your system. Maybe your fans are running fast or slow. Uh, you care about temperatures of your system. You care about the inventory. You have 84 DIMMs in your, in your system and you gotta make sure that the serial numbers all match for that box. You know, the, the BMC's job in life is to do those kind of tasks. Uh, currently on the, on the servers that we have back over there, I think most of them are running the uh, the A speed AST 2400 chip. Um, all right, so so let's talk about the Open BMC then. Um, what we did was we decided to kind of go out to the world and and see what people do because you know like we do some great things, but some other people do even better stuff. And so we discovered that you know there's a, a Yocto uh, Linux packaging. Uh, there's also Open and Embedded uh, Foundation, and they kind of specialize in putting Linux in small places, in embedded places. So that's what we worked with, and we went ahead and we put the kernel, like pretty much the latest kernels, and we're trying to keep up to date all the time, and the latest Yocto, and we're going to move up to the, the latest, latest Yocto pretty soon. But we package this all together, and then you can start tossing in any applications that you want. If you want to put on Python, a web server, whatever you want, SSL, SSH, it doesn't matter. You can package it as part of the Yocto build uh, tools chain, and it's just available for you. So what's the thing that's different? Well, what we did is we have uh, all of our applications communicate to each other over uh, DBus. And then... If, if, uh, if you as a user want to call into the system and discover what's going on, then you can just apply a REST interface on top and communicate over REST, and that's how you get information. So actually, there isn't really an IPMI stack outwardly available for this, because uh, you know when you start to grow into bigger boxes, IPMI becomes very limited. There's only one byte to talk about all the different sensors, and half of the sensors could be present sensors, fault sensors temperature sensors. When you get into big boxes, that's not the case that you're going to be able to do that on a per entity basis. All right. Um, and of course, because the people that worked on the host blue code, the opal code, you know, like these guys, some of these people worked, helped out on the open BMC code. And so therefore, guess what? It's 100% compatible. You could switch out uh, your existing BMC software with the open BMC software and the host code does not need to change whatsoever, right? And there's the host code there. You can actually pick it up. Um, it doesn't have to, like we're not enforcing a rule here that says that Open Power Foundation or you must go ahead and use the open BMC. You don't. You could actually just use it as a reference. So if you're building your own server and you want to figure out how an open or how an open power server, uh, what the host communicates down to the BMC, how it interacts. Heck, even if you want to know just how to power on the box, uh, you can look at the source code for free, openly available, and just use it as a reference. Just figure out, oh, that's how they did that. Oh, okay, cool. Um, currently, the the open BMC code stack can run on a on a barrelized system. The the LC model from IBM, which is the 822 LC, 
as well as the Power8 reference uh, system from OpenPower. And yeah, we talked a little bit of OpenVMC, but basically you can swap out your management consoles. You don't have to have the 2400, you can have a 2500, you have a completely different company's thing. Uh, chip and then just you know change the kernel so that it works right and then all the applications all the sensors communicate over the dbus and then you can communicate and you can swap out you can do anything you want on the front side of what you care about uh, just by you know communicating to that rest interface um, if you haven't known a little bit about what open or sorry what dbus works um, every application that we have can go ahead and attach interfaces to it if you're uh, well, let's see here. So if you're a service, uh, maybe you're a web service, you can attach an OpenBMC service uh, interface and then you get you know, status and information about it. If you wanted to say like, yeah, I can be deleted. And a perfect example of that is if you have an error log. So the, a, a particular error log can then attach an OpenBMC delete interface and then everybody knows that, oh, that can be deleted and a user could go ahead and just get rid of it. Right? Especially for an error log, if you've read it, you understand it, just delete it. And then an inventory item, so you have a bunch of frues, so you have uh, dims, uh, fans, and you can either claim that they're you know, in fault, true or false, you can say present, true or false. Another great thing about OpenBMC and Dbus, of course, is that it's totally compatible with you know, whatever language you want to write. So here's an example, these are all the different applications that we run on the OpenBMC. And you know, some are written in C, some are written in Python. It's just a matter of how you wanted to go about, uh, how do you want to go about doing it. From a REST interface, uh, sometimes you ask, people ask like, hey, what's the schema, right? So here's a schema. You know, if you just go to a URL, a URI of the uh, particular entity, you would just get the properties of it. If you do a slash, you get to see the children of that interface. If you do a slash list, you can see all the children and the properties, enumerate, if you wanted to um, just read a particular property, right, like one fan read or maybe the ambient temperature sensor, you could just, in your, you know, curl call, your rest call, you can just go and get a particular property. Um, you can call methods. You can inject error logs. You can delete error logs, all that kind of stuff. And then um, if, you wanted to know, if you wanted to know what you actually need to call, you can use slash schema, and then it'll actually tell you you know, you needed to call it with uh, two parameters, four parameters, whatever. Oh man, it wouldn't be a presentation with a little bit of code. So let's see some examples. Like if you wanted to log into a server, you'd actually run the command like this. You would just simply go to the IP address you care about, slash login, and then you would give it uh, your root and your password. If you wanted to find out about all the, uh, the temperatures, are they okay? Then you could just run this command here, temperature sensor slash ambient, and you'd get the ambient temperature. Uh, if you wanted to power on the server, you just run a command like this, and boom, the system is starting to power on. And the cool thing is that you can swap it out, right? You don't have to do REST all the time. In fact, we had one of our uh, front-end designers develop a front-end to, to this, and you can see that all it, well, <laughs> what it does is it just goes and makes REST calls. And it was cool because you could put your overlay on top, right? This is an implementation that we did. And if you wanted to do something completely different that was tailored to your, to your server, to your system, change it. Where's the code? Code is there. OpenBMC, off of GitHub, OpenBMC. Uh, there's a readme there so you can learn about how to actually build it and stuff. It's really straightforward. Um, I'm a manager and I always ask my employees to please make it so that I can do it because I love to do the, to the builds too. And you can actually go and look at the schema and uh, see what we're trying to do for the DBus interfaces themselves. Oops. You don't need to actually have hardware. You can feel free to put it on, but you don't have to. You can actually run, thanks to Yocto, we didn't do this ourselves, we got Yocto to do it. And uh, you can just run it in a simulation environment, right? So just off of QEMU. So you can do the compile and then you can say uh, run and then it'll actually run your build in a simulator and then you can, you know, issue calls and see all that fun stuff. All right. Yeah. Um, over here, if you care about the project, you're interested in it, the thing is, every time we drop code, we always drop code in the Git. We don't kind of hold it off to the side and then do a massive push. We drop everyday code into uh, GitHub. 
Um, and then every time there's a commit, we actually have an openpower.xyz server, and it actually kicks off the compile and makes sure that uh, I didn't break the build or anybody else didn't break the build. It's really nice and easy. So what's next, right? This code stack is designed to go on to a couple different things. Number one, the P9 server reference system. The reference board will have the OpenBMC code stack on it. Um, this is going to be a continually growing project because, you know, IBM internal servers, we're also going to be putting OpenBMC stack onto that and, you know, maybe onto your server as well, if you'd like. If you'd like to join and help out, what can you do? Well, you can do lots. I'd love to get some help. Um, First of all, designs really beyond the data center would be fantastic. Uh, enhancements to QEMU for the specific chip, that would be great, because right now it's a simulated one. We'd love to have somebody where it can pretend that the fan is actually wobbling, and then we can see what the system works like. Uh, Redfish. Redfish is kind of the new industry standard for REST-based uh, system management. Uh, we'd love to get some help on that. We have some inroads going, and we'd love to get more, because I think... It's so new that it would be great to have more uh, people talking about it. Uh, test automation, compliance. Oh, right on, I'm done. So this is the last slide. Uh, this is my email address. This is where the documentation is located. Um, the code is there. And if you want to talk to any of us that are on the project, right off of freenode.net, if you go to the OpenBMC hashtag, the channel, you'll actually be able to have developers. And it's a worldwide team, right? Like it's India... China, Australia, on the U.S. And so anytime during the day or night, whenever you're available, if you ask a question, in all likelihood, somebody's around that actually, uh, you know, reply back to the, to the question or go off and figure it out.